Yes. All right, guys, here we go. So when I give you this kind of problem, I'm always going to give you these blank spaces because I am <laughs> way too nice. So obviously, I'm hoping that even if you have no idea, you can fill in these blank spots. So this should be 92, 73, 11, this, huh? Everything all right? What's up? I'm okay. And then... What is that? 116? 126. 126? And then 50? 170. Sweet. If you add something up wrong, I'm going to take points off for that. And then if you did all the work correct, I'm not going to take any more points off. Do you understand? But double check at the beginning that all your numbers are right or else your probabilities are all going to be wrong. Um, so I did see a few people doing this, right? So I'm not picking on any specific person, but I saw a few people doing that. Uh, that doesn't make any sense for this because if I had more Grossmont students, the probability should increase. This probability would decrease. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not looking for a specific Grossmont student, right? So that's not right. How many people could it be? I don't know anything about the person, so it could be... 176. In fact, all of these are going to have 176 on the bottom, except which one? E. e. Because E is a given, that means I can throw some people out. So then the total number of people I'm working with decreases. So the bottom is going to decrease. Uh, and then how many attend gross month? 126. And then whatever the hell that is. 7159? Okay. So almost 72%. Show up. Also, this didn't co show up today, which is nice. These don't build on each other. <laughs> B is its own problem. C is its own problem. Blah, 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 blah. Right? So out of 176 students, how many are business majors? Who to what? That's computer science. 92. And then what's that? 52.27. Okay, I like it. Shabam. Now here's our first little wrinkle in the mix. Or, so now the number of things that match what I'm looking for should increase. But you don't, if I do 126 gross month students plus 73 computer science majors, not only is that wrong, it's like extra wrong. Because then you're going to get 199 out of 176. That's bigger than one. How do you do that, right? You've created people which I know humans can do, but not like this quickly, right? So either you can do 126 plus 73, but then you better subtract off how many that you counted twice. 62, right? If I count these people, these people, I counted them twice out of 176. Or you can just do 126 gross bond students. How many computer science people have I not counted yet? 11. Either way, you end up with 137 out of 176, which is whatever the hell it is. 7784. Okay. I like it. Okay. And now we got our and, and this is where, dear God, you got to somehow remind yourself do not even look at the formulas. For this problem here's where it would really screw you up if you use the formula correctly it will work but it will be a ton more work than you have to do how many people meet both of these requirements two there's only two people that are math majors and quimaka students remember and is intersection where do those inter intersect two so two out of 176 because i don't know shit about the student it could still be any of the 176 and then whatever the hell that is. Who do what? Zero, one, four, three. Okay. One, one, three. I'm relying on you guys, so I don't have to open this computer, this calculator. Zero, one, one, three. All right. 
So part E, that's the one we already identified as having a different denominator. <laughs> what will the denominator be now? Yeah, because I know it could only be a computer science. So what you can do is this. That's your whole world now, right? It has to be a computer science student. So out of 73 computer science students, how many do what I'm looking for? 62. And what's that come out to be? I like it. And again, if you want to, you can make it into a percentage. It's up to you. I've heard that humans like doing that. <laughs> All right. So let me, let me see. Uh, we did talk about independent, and I did give you the test for independent, and I'm always so hopeful that this makes sense. You cannot answer this question with a paragraph. This is nothing you can reason out. It's only math can show you because it's a mathematical definition. Listen up, guys. Does it make sense that the only way to see if two things depend or not on each other means I have to calculate something that shows me how they interact? Does that make sense? Or if they interact, right? So I can't just say, no, probability of A does not equal probability of B. So no, that doesn't mean shit. That's still two separate things. I gotta see how they interact. And what's the only probability that shows me how they interact the given? Tell me, if the probability of A, given that B happens, is different from what the probability of A was by itself, does A care if B happens? Let me say it again. If the probability of A given B is different than what the probability of A was to begin with, then obviously, let me just say it like this, obviously A cares that B happened because it changed, the probability changed. Yes, no, maybe so. Did we talk about like, the Harley Davidson example? Yeah. Got myself in trouble a few semesters ago. I don't give a shit. I'm going to do it again. Um, let's say you see somebody off in the distance, and they're so far away you can't quite tell yet if they're a man or a woman. What's the probability that it's a woman? About 50%, right? Nature actually makes more boys because we die younger, but we'll say 50. Um, if I notice also that they just came off of a Harley Davidson motorcycle, is it still the same probability that it's a woman? No. Has the probability gone up or down? Oh, down. Does that, did I just say, I remember this one semester I had a, a girl that wanted to take me out and beat me up, and I think she probably could have. I'm not saying that no women ride Harley Davidson motorcycles, <coughs> am I? And that's not what dependent means. All dependent means is, does the probability change at all if I know something else? If that's true, that's dependent, which makes complete sense. The probability of a woman depends on whether or not they just got off of a Harley Davidson. That doesn't say it couldn't be a woman if they did. It just says the probability goes down. No, yes, maybe so. It's hot again here, I know it's weird. It's like our own little full year as we are in. It's summer now again. Um, so, I have to check, is the probability of being a Grossman student, is it equal to the probability that Grossman given computer science? If computer science happens, if I know that's true, does the probability of being a Grossman student stay the same? Is that true? Does the probability they're a Grossman student stay the same if I know they're a computer science major? No. no. So this is not equal to each other. And then put numbers. Show me. 0.7159 does not equal 0.8493. So are they independent? No. Done. Did I write many words? I wrote one word. If you start writing a paragraph, stop yourself because you're going to be wrong. This is a mathematical idea that we can talk about with English, but we have to investigate using math. Okay, maybe, maybe. I'm always so hopeful for this. Okay. All right. I like one card at random from the house in a box. I love it. Um, 
So the first piece of this is one card, so this shouldn't be too bad, right? What's the probability it's an AMC? How many total cards am I talking about? 23. 23. Out of those, how many are AMC? Eight. eight. So eight out of 23, whatever the hell that is. 0.3478. Wow, cool. In stereo. 3478? Target gift card, what would that be? 11 out of 23, which is just below 50%. 4782. 4782? Yeah. All right, that's nice. That's one card, easy. One card. Now I'm going to pick two cards, which means I need how many spots? Two. What's probably the first one's AMC? I'm doing it with replacement, right? So what's probably the first one's AMC? 8 out of 23. Don't use this because that's not right. We rounded this thing, right? Use the 8 out of 23. That's, that's completely right. Uh, and then what's the panda? 4 out of 23 because I didn't lose any cards yet. I did it with replacement. And then whatever the hell that is. I have no idea. 0 0.0605. 0 0605? And I knew to multiply because I wanted this to happen and then this to happen. Now, here's a good situation where and is hidden. I want a target card and then another target card, right? Some of you guys are like, I don't want a target card. Well, I mean, it is problem. So 11 out of 23 times another 11 out of 23. Nothing changed. I put it back in. And then, you know, whatever that is. Yes? Yeah. Can well, you put 11 over 23? Square. square. Of course. Yeah. Got it times itself. All good. So I'm sorry. What'd you get again? Uh, 0.2287. 0.2287. Okay. All right. Notice how I like to do this. I asked the exact same question, but now I'm doing it without replacement. So the first card, nothing's changed. It's still 8 out of 23. What's true now for the Panda card? Four out of twenty-two. I didn't lose any panic eyes, but I did lose a card. And then, of course, whatever the hell that is. Point zero six three two. <laughs> two cards for target. Eleven out of twenty-three times. What happens on the next go round? Yeah, one less target card, one less card. Two one seven. Two one seven. Seven three. Funkadelic. Damn, it's getting hot in here now. What's up with that? We'll make it. Don't worry. All right. Now we get to the funky one. This first one hopefully wasn't too bad. And you don't have to do it this way, but I just kind of like... There's four, so I need four spots. Four spots. First one's got to think... Now, do you guys know that's a real survey? But... Just so you don't think even less about your fellow Americans, the way they wrote the survey was a little misleading. So that 7% really didn't mean all those people thought this. It was just worded kind of strange. But you know that some people, what's sad is that is actually not surprising. Right? That's what's sort of sad. You're like, I could see that. Oh, shit. What does that say? So if you are a person that thinks that chocolate milk becomes a brown house, you're welcome. Now you know that's not true. That is bullshit, of course, right? That would be really funkadelic. Um, anyway, so that's, that's just to let you know that's a true thing, but it was just a poorly worded survey. Uh, the first person thinks that that's true, so what goes in this spot? 7%, Seven percent, which is? 0 0.07. 0 .07. Not 0 0.7. That's 70%. Dear God, let's not say that about ourselves. Now, the next three don't think that's true. What's the probability that somebody doesn't think it's true? 0.93. And again, if you want to, it'd be 0.07. You get one of those, and I want three of those. You could write it like that if you want to. The math don't give a shit which way you write it. What do you guys get? 0.056563. Coolness. All right. Now. Uh, I explained this next one to a few people, so you might have overheard me, or you might have been one of those people. Um, 
the earlier example about the probably it's going to rain today is 10%, so probably it's not going to rain is 90%. Every single opposite probability works like that. Stay with me. So if I'm asked a probability question that's hard, why does this probability question suck so bad? What does at least one mean? It could have been one person. And even by itself, real quick, and then it could have been two, three, right? But one person, which one? It could have been the first one, or the second one, or the third one, or the last one. Those are four situations with an or. I have to figure them all out and then add them. You guys, or means that. Or it could have been the first two, or the middle two, or the last two, or the first one and the third one, and the second one and the fourth one, and the holy shit. And then I haven't even got the three yet, and then four shit. You guys understand, there's so many things that match what I'm looking for, I'd have a lot of calculations to do. Oh, shit. If the opposite probability is easier, hell yeah. So it's like answering the opposite question, but then you do one minus, because then you'll answer the question. If I say what's probably going to rain today, and you say, there's a 90% chance it won't, you basically just answer me, because one minus that is 10%. Hmm. What's the opposite of at least one? None. The only way you could show I'm wrong is that at least one person in here likes statistics. The only way you can show me I'm wrong is to show me that nobody does. And then we'll do the rest. All right. Yes, yes? So what is the probability that nobody thinks that's true? What would that mean about all four people? They all don't think that. So what would each one of them get? What value? 0.93, so, oh, Jeff, you got to have that. I want to write in blood. So probability of none, let me push this over, yep. would be 0.93 times 0.93 times 0.93 times 0.93, right? Is that, is, everybody see that? If none of them think that way, they each don't think that way. So it's 93, 93, 93, 93. That does not answer the question. That's actually kind of, Pissy, you're like answering the opposite of what I asked. So then what are we going to do after we get that? One minus that. Anytime, this is going to happen a few times in this class. Anytime the opposite situation is easier to figure out, hell yeah, I'm going to do that and then just do one minus. Let me show it to you a little bit different way because this is a huge idea for later. Maybe I'll do it up there since I got. I want to move the camera around. I've got blank paper too. Holy shit! Um, if I did this, this is like zero people, one person, two people, three people, four people, right? And whatever the hell these probabilities are, what's got to be true about all of them? They all have to add to be. One. So the probability of none plus the probability of one. Yeah, I'm doing this. Is this happening? Is he really? Yes, he is. Shit. All right. So that is, of course, a true statement. Yes, because I added up all the probabilities. It's got to be one. Where's the probability of at least one? Which ones are at least one? All this shit, right? You with me? I like it. So you guys are like, Continue. So if I subtract this from both sides, the probability of at least one is one minus probability of none. Of course it is. One minus one chunk equals the other chunk because the two chunks make one. So how can you always do the probability of at least one? One minus the probability of none. And that happens a lot. I can kind of like, if I have a factory, I can check like 20 randomly selected parts. And if at least one of them is bad, I'm going to have to redo the batch. So what's the probability that at least one is bad? And I can figure that out using the none thing anyway. So that happens a lot in real life. It's at least one thing. So what is 0.93 times blah, 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 blah? Seven four eight zero eight zero. Kick ass. And then one minus point seven four eight 
is 0.252. Okay, so that's how you do that one. And then the last one. And then we'll get out of here a little early. Yay. The funkiest one on here. I suddenly bring Brussels sprouts in. You're all like, what the shit? So let me do what a lot of you guys did. This problem, there are so many problems in the homework where the most important thing is figuring out the symbols for what they tell me and what they ask me. So if I call probability of B is the brown cow belief, right? The chocolate milk believers. What percentage of them are flat earthers? I don't know. I'm a flat, shut up. So probably B is 0.07. So what, how do I, and, and what's the probability? What other thing am I introducing here? Brussels sprouts. I already used B, so let's use S. So what is this 4% that I'm telling you? What's the idea? What would it look like in symbols? A 4% would be the probability of what? B and S. And of course that is 0.04. And what is the sim what is the symbols for what I'm asking you? The probability of what given what? S. Yes, S given B. All right, let me stop there for a second. This is the step that a lot of people skip all the damn time. And if you didn't, your life would be easier. I've written symbols for what they tell me. I've written symbol for what they ask me. Now let me write the formula, and then I can see where the shit to put stuff in. So what's the formula for S given B? Shit, what goes on the bottom? Good, probably a given thing. And on the top is? And I know all that, don't I? What's probably of S and B? 0.04. And what's probably B? 0.07. So that's 0.5714? Maybe? Did I remember that right? That kind of scares me too. I know all my division by seven. Yay, Jeff. <laughs> that is weird. Okay, I know that last one was weird, but that one, I like that problem. Oh shit, I would. Because it's one where you can't count. You gotta use the formulas. And you gotta use symbols. So next time, I will have the answer key for the other side of that. That's the practice quiz on the other side. And then the next time after that, it'll be quiz time. Yay. Oh, I'm sorry. Last thing, somebody pointed it out to me. You want to know this because it's in the whole work. Mutually exclusive events. So if somebody tells me A and B are mutually exclusive, they can't happen at the same time. That's what mutually exclusive means. Therefore, the probability of A and B would be what? So if a problem starts with the sentence, E and J are mutually exclusive events. Stop. Write down probability of E and J equals zero. Keep going now. People skip that first sentence and they're like, how do I do this problem? I'm like, well, you didn't give yourself that information. You need that. All right, that's enough. Don't forget your IDs. Give me back my calculators.